Good evening. It's 2020, and we're back with our byline show. Uh, we're going to make a little change here. We're going to be uh, on a little bit less frequently, but we're still going to have really interesting and engaging people from our community. And we're starting tonight with our newly elected school committee member, Ben. And uh, as uh, those of you who have been following the show for a while know, we're, we're trying to keep track of what's going on as our new town government is uh, sort of getting its legs under it. And so, Ben, you're going to be joining that government. Yes. What motivated you to run for a, a public office? Well, I mean, being a parent definitely uh, motivated me a, a little bit. But uh, yeah, just, just wanting to get involved and, and make a difference in the lives of kids. That's, my father worked with kids, and that, that was his mantra, was that if you want to change the future, you have to be present in the lives of kids today. So it's a great philosophy and a great focus. So Definitely. let's uh, go back a little bit and, and talk about how you got to Amherst and yeah. and uh, hear a little bit about your professional life. And uh, so take the ball. All right. So I, I moved up here approximately 13 years ago for uh, and, and for family reasons, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so my son was born in 2009, and that pretty much kept me here for the next, uh -huh. we'll say, 18 years <laughs> at good. least. But yeah, great. So that was my motivation. So family brought you here, and professionally, you've done some pretty interesting things along the way. Yep. Tell us a little about that, and because then I want to connect it to what you're doing today and where you are in politics. Right. <laughs> right. So. So I was in the United States Army Corps of Engineers, and after I left there, I worked for about a decade in uh, residential construction. And uh, from there, I moved on to, I went back to school for journalism and communications. And I worked in the, the news for a little bit in Channel 3 and Hartford WFSB. Oh, and then I also reported traffic for a while, which <laughs> was fun, I guess we could say. Did you yeah. get to go up in a helicopter? No, we had a, um, a Cessna airplane that oh. we used in the... Oh, I love it. But you did get up into the air? Once. <laughs> what? Once. And got, got air sick, which was... Uh, uh, that took care of that. Yeah. <laughs> All set with that. Tried it, done it, yep. no more. <laughs> None of that. And then after moving up here, I ended up working in uh, maintenance for about six or seven years with the, uh, at the Center for Extended Care. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I entered the school system and right. was initially a custodian. And I recently got promoted, and now I'm the assistant director of facilities. So. Great. Honest work. Do what you want, you know, up, down, the here, there. Yep. Lots of training and education. And, and, uh, but you started uh, your work in Amherst in, uh, as a custodian at the yep. schools. Yep. And then what happened? Well, then the, uh, the assistant facilities director uh, position opened up, and the uh, the job posting was almost identical to my resume. I mean, probably have a little more experience, but uh -huh. but yeah. So I, I ended up applying, and it was a long, Terrific. tedious process. So. Okay, so you're now the assistant director of facilities. Director of yeah. facilities. Okay, and so that puts you right in the middle of the school system. Absolutely. And uh, which school were you working in when you were a custodian? Here, there, and everywhere? Or? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Initially, I, I did a, a split between Wildwood and Fort River Elementary. Yeah. And then I was, as of last fall, I was anchored at Wildwood. At Wildwood, okay. Yeah. Uh, but now you're working uh, across the system. Right. And so you got uh, quite a uh, uh, set of insights around the condition of these various buildings and yeah. stuff like that. And so... Um, with that knowledge and uh, what dad put into your head about caring about kids, mm -hmm. uh, then the public service came into the picture and what motivated you at that point to actually run as opposed to, because you're serving the children in your job every day, making sure they have a safe environment in which to learn and, and right. grow. But then you decided to take the plunge into politics. So that's, that's a kind of big leap. Right, right. <laughs> Most people might 
either think about it or say, no way, Jose, never. <laughs> <laughs> but you made the jump. Right. It, both of my parents kind of had a, a lot of experience in the, in the public eye. My father worked for the state of Connecticut in the, uh, actually the juvenile judicial system. Uh -huh. and, and my mother worked for the city of Hartford. And so uh, I, I'm not entirely sure that I knew that there was another option then to get directly involved. So, yeah. so it was, kind of felt like I was ready to do it, ready to take yeah. on the, the responsibilities. And you saw the opportunity and the need. Um, Absolutely. Forming new school committee. And uh, so remind us, uh, um, how many members on the school committee, the regional school committee? On the, so the, the five members of the Amherst School Committee are yeah. automatically on, the on board with the regional. And, yeah. then, and then each of the, uh, each town from the region sends a, another okay. member. So. Very good. And so you actually are serving on two boards at the same time. So, and um, from Amherst, how many people were on the ballot and, and how did that all line up? There was a total of seven for five seats. Okay. And uh, are you the only new person coming into the board? Yep. Okay. Just so um, you're entering an organization that's been functioning and, and these guys have been on there for a while. Uh, but right. you are going to bring your own voice and your own perspective. And uh, is it fair to assume because of the work you do in the schools, you're going to do some significant focus on the, the capital side of what's going on in the, in the school committee? Absolutely. And, and in the school system, excuse me, yeah. Right. And, and clearly focusing on the, uh, the environment, the, the quality of the environment that our kids, that our kids are learning in. Okay. It's very important to me. So uh, we went through this process in town of a study because we have two uh, elementary schools that were uh, trying to figure out where they were going. Um, we, we had a, maybe a false start and then we regrouped. Yeah put another study committee together, they came out with a report. What's your take on that from the perspective of somebody who's seen the building from, from the studs? Right. <laughs> from the studs out and from, uh, right. from the wall board in. Right, so, so I actually participated in the Fort River Feasibility Study as well. Okay. So a decent perspective on in that. In your and, role. Right, well, right, right, as, okay. a, uh, as a, an employee of the an district employee. at the yeah. time. Right. right, okay. And so, I would say I, I definitely got a lot of insight as to what our what our needs are, and we have we have a great deal of need as far as an improvement and uh, in at least two of the school buildings in our district. So. And, and those you're talking about elementary schools, right? Right. Yeah. Wildwood okay. and Fort. Because our specific. junior high and our our middle school and our high school, yeah. um, a lot of work's been done over time, and they're in decent shape. Would you say? Decent. I, I would say. Um, we, we still have to deal with the roof at the middle school. That's a, okay. a, a high. That's a structural issue if you don't fix the roof. Right. The next thing is the walls and the floors go. Absolutely. <laughs> and, then, and then air quality and these, these yeah. sorts of things are affected by the, a moisture, a moist environment, I guess. Okay. Right. Yeah, but the real big focus with, uh, in the community and in the system around capital has been looking at these two schools. Right. And recently the state gave the town the green light. Yep. Said, yeah. You did a good job on the study. Yeah. You got a plan. We see that there's a consensus in the community yeah. to figure out what we're going to do about our elementary schools. But the decisions haven't been made yet. Right, there's a yet. direction mm -hmm. that's sort of been laid out. Yep. You want to give us your perspective on on that? Right. So the the, the two most and now you're speaking as a school committee member, right? Right. 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 <laughs> okay. So the, the two most uh, viable options that, that we have right now are, I would, I would say, an aggressive renovation. We're, you know. We're not talking about just paint and, and these sorts of things. Those improvements are going, going to be ongoing until we actually get uh, get to our, our end goal. Because they got to be done. Right, right. Otherwise, the buildings are going to not be functional. Right. Okay. And they, they need to be inhabitable. <clears throat> in so we've got to make some investment in them, no matter what the final decisions are down the road. Definitely. Okay. But then there's this continuum from doing as little as you can get away with yep. to doing more. Yep. And so how do we balance that? Right, and that, that's going to be the big challenge over the next couple of years is, is figuring out a, a, a complete consensus on that. There's, there are a lot of folks from the, the previous project that had failed that, that are definitely in support of a, a brand new school, which mm -hmm. 
which is that's that would be the the furthest uh Oh, okay, so when we, when we did the fe the feasibility study, yeah. they were there were options A through E. So that that would be option A. E. Okay. Right, and E would be just building, bringing the buildings up to uh, current building codes. Yeah. Which would leave a lot of other issues falling by the wayside. Okay. And so the most cost effective <clears throat> is somewhere between a, a completely new school and an aggressive renovation project. Mm -hmm. So, so um, if you got to um, an aggressive renovation project you right. would have a school that was safe and functional but it would be a 50 60 year old set of buildings I mean the, sort of somewhere I, I, in that range right we'd be, we'd be uh, you essentially from the outside looking in would, would see kind of a new building it'd be okay. kind of akin to the the project done in 2002 at Crocker Farm yeah. so okay new building on on an old Mm -hmm. Not foundation, but, you know. Okay. So the question is, how much do we invest in these properties, and will they get us far enough right. to, be feel, to feel comfortable that these schools are going to work right. on into the future? Uh, and there is a, a core of people in town who say uh, uh, that's a good way to go, and yeah. then there's a core of people who say good money after bad because exactly. you're going to spend uh, – a substantial portion of what you would otherwise be spending for the new school and you're going to end up with a product that is still not going to be up to current standards right educationally even though it might be uh, structurally right is that a fair way to summarize that oh ab absolutely because if, if we were to go with the the lowest of options for, yeah. for lack of better word Option E, which e, which is yeah. just building, bringing the building up to current codes and standards. The issues that we have with the uh, like the quad system in the two yeah. two elementary schools, where we have you know you have sound traveling from classroom to classroom, mm -hmm. that would still exist. A lot of the issues that we have would would still be there. Mm -hmm. We would just be meeting current building codes. Right. So. Okay. So that's that's the fundamental debate. Right. And then, if the decision is new school, then the question is. One school, two schools. Then right. the question is, where if it's one school, and all that. So, right. any thoughts about that, or it's too early in your in your work to be able to start thinking that about uh, thinking that out loud. Well, the 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 one thing, one one aspect of it I, that I could definitely speak to is the uh, what what we've called the the one school option would actually leave us with two elementary schools so Crocker Farm would still exist as oh, okay. a as an elementary school and then the the big question would be whether it's the the Wildwood site or the Fort River site that we build on would be the Can, better of the two for right. a single new school right. to accommodate all of the children in those two yep so that's that's a decision point as well sort of right so when we were invited into the MSBA process. We, we submitted two statements of interest, one for each of the schools, mm -hmm. and the one that was accepted was the Fort River one. So, okay, so there's a little, I guess, less ambiguity there. But okay, so, so that's, the real question that's is a little bit clearer now that we're heading in that direction. If we go with the one new school scenario, right, if that's the one where we go. Okay, yeah. so the, I guess the real, the the question would be, what would we do with the remaining building? Does it continue to function as a school that's that's one of the questions we would need right. to answer yeah or be turned over to another public use right or be sold off for private use yeah that's another option yeah. okay um so you can't be a, a johnny one note here <laughs> right so <laughs> you're going to bring a lot of expertise and experience and vision around the physical facilities, the capital agenda. Absolutely. But you're going to be responsible as a member of the school committee to hear and think about and vote on lots of other stuff. Yeah. So can you give me some insight and share with the folks who are watching us about two or three things that you think are Important. most critical on your mind that you think need attention and, and that you're going to be trying to pay specific uh, more specific attention to and develop some expertise and yeah. and create a meaningful voice on those things. But I would definitely say uh, equ equity is a another big issue for me. The uh, the, the su superintendent's equity task force that that's a subcommittee I'm mm -hmm. interested in being involved with. Um, I, 
I can't stress the importance enough across the board of, of having equity as far as access to education and you know parity amongst the uh, our, our educators as well. That that I feel like that affects equity and how that trickles so down. Sort of. You're using the word equity, and you've used it probably six times. Mm -hmm. Give us your definition or idea of when you think about equity, what are you thinking about? I think thinking in terms of mostly access to education. So um, we, we, can't, we can't equalize everyone across the board. Everyone has different, is, is coming into the fold with you know, different needs and from different backgrounds and these sorts of things. So basically meeting everyone's needs or attempting to meet everyone's needs. Mm -hmm. it's a, to me, it's, it's, it's definitely a goal. Yeah. But uh, yeah, me meeting everyone's needs across the board as, as best we can and serving every community with kind of the same focus. Within the school system. Right, right. Because okay. we do have several different communities. Right. So um, when I think about this a little bit, I think about social equity. Right. I think about very educational equity. Yeah. And um, I think about the fact that you got a budget mm -hmm. and one way to define equity is everybody gets X shekels, right. and, <laughs> but what if somebody needs a little more? Right, right. So, And, the, and there, there definitely are, I guess, folks within our, our communities that, that do need a little bit more, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, folks that are, that are serviced under our special, special education programs would probably right. need a little bit more. Yeah economically in these, these sorts and because of, of the presence of the university right. this community has uh, a really high level of folks coming in um, some of them for a very short time yeah. some of them might be in the middle of their education some might be just starting out but their parents have come to the university to study or they may be new faculty or yeah. researchers who come to so we have a kind of it's a special community in that, in that way, yep. and in a sense, that creates some challenges for the school system right? because they may be coming from places with very different cultural expectations. They may be coming with different language, right? and so it presents a special set of challenges for the school system. So it isn't just about race or poverty or right. class. It's about a very mixed community yep. with a lot of different kinds of needs yep. to make sure that each of the ch children there get the education that they need. Right, which is the, that's the important part, is that, that we all have access to the same, I guess the same uh, resources within the educational right. environment. Yeah. And again, it's not about dividing the pie equally right. simply because there are 10 children here and 10 children there. Right. It's about what do these 10 children need and what do these 10 children need. Yep. They're all our children. They're in our community. They, so we need to make sure that they get the education that they need. Absolutely. Um, other threads or agenda, I know it's, you're very new to it, <laughs> but you know you did just come off of a campaign and right. people probably asked you, you know, some interesting questions along the way that <laughs> Only you can tell me and, right. and us what what came up that like like oh wow I never thought about that or right. geez I was I've been worrying about this and it re it's real right other well, uh, one of the the biggest things that uh I I think pretty much everyone that I spoke to had had some sort of a take or or questions you know regarding finances like how is our money spent where do we, where does mm -hmm. every last dime go and. In my new position, that's been something that I've been having to research a, a lot of. Uh -huh. So, definitely budget and finances, pretty big. But also, one thing that came up that I didn't, which is odd. I'm a so I'm a basketball coach. I'm a youth basketball okay. coach, right? Okay. And, and one uh, area avocationally, of as as an avocation, right, right, a volunteer yep. thing. Yeah, yep. good, okay. So, so one thing that came up that I should have been on my radar, I imagine, earlier was uh, issues within. The athletics department, you know, so fields, which goes back to the the structural part, yeah, but back to capital and right, yeah, infrastructure. Yep. So that that's one of those things that I didn't anticipate thoroughly. I, I imagine, yeah, it, I definitely thought about the athletics program, but you know, I, I didn't realize the amount of need that we have there as well. In the community at large, 
or at the schools in particular, or both? Kind of both, but more so at the, the schools. More, more at the schools. Themselves. Okay. Like, we have the, we just had a football team that was... Did fine. Right. They wow. Did fantastic. Ended up in, a, in the Super Bowl, essentially. Yeah, that was great. Our fields don't necessarily match the quality <laughs> of the, of the team. Exactly. Yeah. So the, these sorts of issues, okay. they're definitely on my radar now. <laughs> great. And um, so you're on both the regional school committee and the elementary school committee. Yeah. How are you thinking about that? Just two sets of meetings and go in and barrel through? Um, or do you have some kind of specific thoughts and focus about what you think you want to do on the elementary level and contribute versus the regional? You know, I think at the elementary level, I probably have a, a much more clear picture of kind of where I want to be involved, how I fit into that, and mm -hmm. still learning a bit about the regional, regional. side of things, yeah. Because uh -huh. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. You're working with people from other communities, and so... Um, learning new personalities. New personalities, and... Yeah. Uh, although you'll be learning some new personalities at the elementary school committee as well, right? Have so you I've, worked with most of them before? Right. I've, I've definitely... Uh, socially interacted okay. with, with, with most of them. But I, I've also, on, on the feasibility study, I, I, that the, ch the current chair, I, Eric Nakajima, yeah. I worked with him on that, and I've, we've definitely interacted a lot as well. But, Great. but in, the, in the meantime, I've been sitting down individual, individually with each of the members to try to familiarize yeah. myself, which is something I probably have to do at the regional level as well. <laughs> so um, I had the privilege uh, when our new town councilors were first elected to participate in a, one of their very first, before they were even sworn in, gatherings mm -hmm. to um, get to know each other and begin to learn and understand about um, the role of being a councilor because they certainly understood the charter because yeah. they had to do that work before they could be a successful candidate and get elected. Yep. But uh, one of the things that jumped out at me, which was really interesting because I have a lot of interest and background in the arts, was I think five of the counselors um, had some form of background in the arts. Oh. And I was like, wow, and one was dancer, and, mm -hmm. and they were musicians, and um, theater. Mm -hmm. And so I was really surprised at how many of them had an arts background. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious uh, whether you've had a chance to think about where things like art fit in or the arts fit into our educational system. You reference sports. Right. And so it'd be interesting to hear a little bit about how you think about these other things that go on outside of the classroom. Right, um, right. And uh, in, in terms of, you know, their importance and relative standing within the school system, whether it's the arts or the sports or or anything else, social or political engagement, because right, all the, there's the a lot of those clubs and things at the school. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have a background as so. What year is this? So I've been a I've actually been a <laughs> DJ for 30 years. Oh, really? Embarrassingly enough, wow. as, as long as that is, and, and very musically involved. You started at at two, apparently. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't see a single gray hair. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, good. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and, and also grew up playing instruments. And oh, interesting. My son's a saxophone player who's just now starting to play guitar as well. Oh, so, okay. so clearly these that's the arts are definitely important to me. I also have a niece who's a, a visual artist. So, okay. and and just the the impact that a. a the broader our, our education is individually, mm -hmm. the more complete and whole we are as, as human beings. So, okay. so the, these are definitely important aspects. But also for uh, political involvement for younger folks. I'm also on the Human Rights Commission, and okay. we currently need a high school student to, oh. to jump in. So, okay. But continuing these, these sorts of involvements. So you see uh, the education that's going on in the classroom as obviously extremely important, but not to the exclusion of these other kinds of activities which help create a, a well-rounded individual right. and a student who can interact with the world in more than just as a, an employee, right, right. more in their combination of civic and 
and cultural and other ways to engage with the community. Absolutely. One of the, one of the best teachers I had in high school initially forced me to, she was also a town councilor, I should add, in, in the, the town I grew up in. Yeah. And so she forced me initially to go to town council meetings with her. Uh -huh. And then, so that was my junior year in high school. So, and I, that was something that I continued uh -huh. on later. So I imagine there might have been a seed so planted for that, something. That, that sounds like a seed to me, <laughs> yeah. and it's now flowering. <laughs> right, right. So, so I'd like to see um, some other in, folks. in the minute or two we have left, do you have any other key points that you'd like to raise that we haven't discussed that just give you an opportunity since you're um, on camera? And, right. uh, <laughs> Nothing major I can think of, no. Okay. <laughs> so, we want to wish you lots of luck. Um, Thank you. Thanks for jumping in. Thank you for having me here. Bringing your voice to the, uh, to the school committee, and uh, it's, it's really important work. So, Definitely. thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you uh, um, very soon with uh, some more guests. Thank you.